from Union Square in the heart of San Francisco. It's The Cube, covering Spark Summit 2016, brought to you by Databricks and IBM. Now, here are your hosts, John Walls and George Gilbert. And we'll go back here on The Cube. We continue our coverage here in San Francisco of Spark Summit 2016. Along with George Gilbert, I'm John Walls. And we're joined now by Steve Huber, who is the Vice President of Sales for CASC, which is an open source applications platform. And Steve, thanks for being with us here yeah. on theCUBE. Thanks for having first me. First time, I believe, right? Yes, first time. You're a CUBE newbie. CUBE uh, newbie. So, so tell us a little bit, introduce, uh, if you would, CASC to our audience and sure. you know, primarily what you all do and what brings you here to the Spark Summit. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, CASC is a little over four years old. We're uh, an application company that's built an open source platform to support building applications on Hadoop and Spark. And so you know, the ecosystem has had a lot of challenges dealing with this rapid growth of many different components in Hadoop and, and in the Spark ecosystem. And so we make that a lot easier to deal with and help people bring uh, value to uh, those things much faster. All right, and so, all right, so how do you do it? Yeah. Um, that's, <laughs> that, that, that's what you're all the about. Secret sauce, right? You got a lot of data happening yeah. here and then you got to make sense of it too Absolutely. at the same time, so. Right, so uh, again, we have this platform called CDAP, stands for Cask Data Application Platform, and it's really an abstraction layer that would sit on top of Hadoop or uh, on top of Spark or both and, and enable organizations to build data pipelines, track and manage lineage, and actually build full function applications and manage that from development all the way through to production, right? And typically our customers find an experience of about five times faster in using something like CDAP versus having to stitch all of those components together manually. So, um, do the distro vendors, the Hadoop distro vendors, um, or, or even Databricks, see you as someone who gets in between them and their customer? So, I, I don't know if I'd say we get between them, but we're really an enabler, right? So, um, you know, CDAP is an open source platform that supports all the different flavors of Hadoop. Um, and so, we are a very portable solution. In fact, one of the nice things that our customers like about CDAP is um, you can build uh, pipelines or applications on one distribution, and you can run them on any of the distributions, whether on-prem or in the cloud. So we're, we really sort of sit above you know, the, the storage layer, if you will, in the stack, and, and, and we're focused on adding value as opposed to uh, getting between. But the, the, there's a, the, the distros have begun to fragment. Yes. You know, so you have to do either a lot more work to provide that commonality, um, well, and then it's not or, but the platform vendors who are sure. diverging all of a sudden see someone with a layer above them that makes them look more homogenous. Yeah. So, um, so that's a, it's a great point. I mean, ultimately, some of the larger customers that are a little more down the maturity curve you know, with uh, technologies like Hadoop and with Spark actually have started to implement different distributions, right, in the same organization. So portability has um, is, is become a really uh, significant uh, differentiator for someone like Cask in the marketplace. Um, and, and the fact that we can also manage that full life cycle for those customers uh, has been really important. So um, it is a lot of hard work and our engineering team out here in Palo Alto does an incredible job of staying current on all the major distributions. And, and is portability, is that synonymous with interoperability? Is that? Absolutely. I mean, so that's what we're talking about here, right? Certainly. It's making sure that everything's syncing up, talking, speaking the same language. Right, like you literally could build, a, as an example, a data pipeline to support a specific use case, and on today, run it on one distribution, and tomorrow, plug and play, and with minor configuration change, run it on another. The, the alternative is to rebuild all those integrations from scratch. Right, so we're really helping uh, companies to stay on that edge of innovation and, and be able to really uh, be agile in their utilization and consumption of Hadoop and Spark. What about if there's some basic building blocks on the bottom in the, in the distribution, not you, but below that, where, that are just missing? Like one distribution just might not have a, uh, it's not, a, not lacking a consistent security model, but like any security sure. in certain components, you know, whereas someone else has implemented right. very consistently across the, the modules. Certainly, so you know, one of the beauties of having a platform uh, underneath is that you can build a lot of things very quickly. So it is really designed from the ground up as a developer platform. 
So when there are things missing or custom things that are unique to a specific use case, we can very quickly enable the creation of those things and fill those gaps um, or bring in other third party technology and write connectors to it very, very quickly. So in other words, part of your strategy explicitly includes backfilling missing functionality. Yes, if required, yes. Okay. I mean, just in this, the world as it is now with you know, all these great inputs that we have, right? Here comes data from every which way, right? <laughs> right. Um, I mean, what about just the complexity in general? I mean, I mean, how are you breaking this down for clients so it becomes yeah, actionable? It's a, great, it's a great question. So, you know, I, I would say, the way I'd like to answer that is, um, when we deal with customers that are a little more mature, again, have kind of gotten their knuckles bloodied, you know, working through uh, their journey uh, in this ecosystem, you know, they're looking for that sort of abstraction layer. They're looking for ways of being able to do it better, being able to be more agile, uh, and so forth. So, by being able to remove all that complexity and give this acceleration, we really can enable companies to leverage all these data assets much faster. So, as an example, um, one of our large customers is one of the world's largest providers of data. And, and so one of the things that they found that was really interesting in their evaluation process is they took a team of people that were quite skilled in the ecosystem, and they took another team of people that were sort of mediocre skill in the e ecosystem, put them through three days of training on our platform, and they let them sort of do a bake-off side by side to sort of see what the results would be. So we were able to take sort of these newbies um, and be able to really drive a result. Uh, for them, during the POC after three days of training, they uh, expressed a 3x time factor of being able to deliver the solution faster than the organic team of, of experts, hmm. right? And that's just after a couple days of training. So, yes, removing that complexity, really enabling people to get that value much faster, and the distro companies uh, like to do business with us because we help them to sort of enable consumption and growth of the underlying infrastructure much faster. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit of a, tr it's a bit of a, damned if you do, damned if you don't, for the distro vendors, you help customers absorb their infrastructure faster, but you also insulate the customers from being too tied into any one distro. Yeah, I mean, certainly, um, you know, get, getting, getting locked in um, is a concern for, for many large companies, and they want that flexibility. You know, but I would say, you know, you know we do support all the different distributions, but we have some that we work a little more tightly with um, you know, at this stage of our growth, um, especially with Cloudera as an example. So what about applications on top of your yeah. platform? Yeah, certainly. What are, are where, the, where the ISV wants you know, either backfill functionality yeah. or protection? Certainly. So we've seen some of that. Um, you know, our, our, one of our largest customers is one of the world's largest telcos. And so some of the other companies in that ecosystem are looking at us exactly that way, where they want to be able to build sp industry specific applications, leveraging our platform so they can tie into their trading partners very aggressively. Um, and then we also are building uh, applications um, on top of our platform. We actually have a solutions engineering team that we recently uh, started to build after post our series B round. Uh, of funding that we uh, completed in the fall. Um, and that team is focused on also delivering more horizontal applications, things like customer 360 and fraud and recommendation engines that will also be included as part of the open source platform. So to give people a much quicker jumping off point to solving those problems. And, and so how are the nature of applications that you are building then, just given what, what we do have available now, we've talked a lot this week about continuous applications. And, mm -hmm. and, and uh, I mean, how is that, being altered now for you in terms of the capabilities that you have at your disposal? So, you know, we, we, at this stage of, uh, of our development, we've been, we've tried to stay very focused on where we sort of feel the mainstream of, of the requirements are. So, I would say if I were, were going to say these were the top three areas where we've been focused, it's very much been around data lake creation and, uh, and oper uh, operationalizing those environments. We've been very much focused on enabling data science. So many organizations have wanted more of a self-service layer, an easier layer mm -hmm. uh, for their data scientists to be able to consume their data assets. Um, and then also focus on these uh, sort of, what I call unified customer or customer 360 gets I think a little overused. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of emphasis out there across different industries on having a more unified perspective of their customer and trading partner interactions. 
Th that's the sweet spot of where we've seen the majority of our, of our opportunities in the marketplace today. Well, it's working well for you. Working well for uh, you. Steve, thanks for being with us yeah. here on theCUBE. Yeah. Nice you so to have much. you and yeah, look pleasure. forward to seeing you again shortly thanks, down the road. Steve. Thank you. Steve Huber, the VP of Sales uh, from CAST. And thank you again for being here. More from San Francisco Spark Summit 2016 in a moment. Cool. All right, thanks guys. Thanks. Appreciate yeah. it.